When I was a little girl, I was strong and powerful. I could do anything I put my mind to. I created a game in the Kansas City suburb where I grew up where I dared all the neighborhood kids to try and push me down. And I stood strong and undefeated like a mountain until I turned nine. One day, I found a golf ball-sized growth in my chest. My mom rushed me to the doctors who examined me and diagnosed me with breasts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said the other one would be coming in any time now. <laughs> yeah. This made me think of something my older sister had said to me not long before this, getting ready for bed in the bathroom. Overcome with a vision, you will have large breasts and they will be coming in soon. And whether by a prophecy or a curse, by the time I walked into fifth grade, I was preceded by two large growths in my chest. And one day when I was at school, I started to notice that all of the other students were talking excitedly about something. But when I approached them, they'd stop. I tried all morning to get someone to tell me what it was. Nobody would say anything. It was driving me crazy. Finally, before lunch, I got some girls who I had thought were my friends to tell me after asking them three times, what is it? Look at your chair. Blood. There's blood on my chair. My womb had opened up, and the last of my childhood innocence had been flowing out of me all morning, and I didn't even know it. Everybody knew but me. Even my teacher had known, and she hadn't said anything. That felt the weirdest. Why hadn't she told me? Why didn't she have my back? Had I done something wrong? Was there something wrong with me? That day, the nurse sent me home, even though I wasn't sick. And when I came back the next day, and for the next weeks, and months, and even years, hey, pizza face, I remember you. You had blood all over your pants, didn't you? And that strong fierceness that I had had as a young girl turned into an armor of protection, my shoulders hunching forward, trying to hide these large breasts my sister had prophesied. And any time a boy showed any interest in me, I thought for sure something must be wrong with him to be interested in someone like me. And every single month, my blood just kept coming back like a red curse. I got over the years so that I framed out those five to seven days that I would be bleeding because I never knew how sick I was going to feel. Throwing up, rolled over in debilitating cramps. Eventually, I made my way to California and I started working with an acupuncturist medicine woman. And she taught me about the sacredness of the female blood. She taught me that the menstrual blood contains a lot of power and life-giving force, and that it comes every month with the cycles of the moon. So I started creating ritual every month 
when I began my blood. I'd put out an altar, a moon altar, while I bled, and then I'd put it away for the rest of the month. I even started collecting my blood and feeding it to my plants in the garden because I had learned that the menstrual blood really does contain life thriving power. One day, I found myself at a gathering with women and children, surrounded by redwoods and teepees, free-flowing breasts, and there was a red tent, a place for women to gather while bleeding. I learned that the young, the young girls were gathering in the red tent with the elders, putting together a ceremony to honor their first blood as a rite of passage. When I learned this, I felt both elated and deflated in crushing pain. I thought about my fifth grade teacher and I wondered, had anybody ever taught her about the sacredness of the woman's blood? Had they taught her that it was something to be proud of or had she been taught how I'd been shown to hide the blood in pain and shame. I stood there with my sisters, and I watched as these young maidens walked out of the red tent, all dressed up in red, with makeup and their hair done up, followed by the elders. And I sang to them in ritual and prayer but I still felt this crushing pain in my chest and in my womb. So I closed my eyes to look within, and I saw two big brown eyes staring back at me of my nine-year-old self, looking scared, confused, and abandoned. I told her what I wish someone had told me at that age. Your feminine form is beautiful. Your large breasts are powerful. Yeah. And your blood is sacred. <laughs> 